Hello, class. Hello, elementary algebra students. I'm going to do a recording to help you with your quiz number three, which covers uh, 3.1, introduction to decimal numbers, and 3.6. So it's called uh, decimal numbers and fractions. Okay. And so I hope everybody's doing fine and uh, getting ready for um, this practice, uh, getting ready for this Canvas Respondents quiz number three. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do this recording. So I'm going to share my document camera with you. Here we go. So this practice quiz is is taken from uh, your course workbook, okay? And so it's on page forty six. So there's a an additional practice quiz number three kind of like a version A, it's just not labeled version A. Then you have this version B, and it basically has nine problems, okay? And then you also have an online Hox Learning uh, quiz number three as well that you can also do. And so I, I am going to do the version B for you, and hopefully if you review that and look at that, that will help you get an idea of how to show your work for this quiz, okay? Now, um, after I do a problem, I'm going to check my answer key because you know in your workbook on page 53, and this is the first part of your course workbook for the Math 105 correct portion, there's also a little answer key. So you'll see here on page 53 that they have just the answers for that. So I will make sure after I do a problem that I'll just check my work. Um, some of the handouts I have out are like your multiplication chart is helpful. Um, and of course your scientific calculator is helpful. So remember when you record yourself um, doing the canvas respondas, remember you wanna have the view of your face and both your hands writing from your desk, from your desktop. So my computer right now, it's like, you know, it's on a couple calculus books, so it's elevated, but, um, I use this as a, as a guide here. Let's say this is your desk or your table. I need to have this um, view of you writing from your desktop or your tabletop. So we need to have this view. So remember, my computer is elevated because I, it, I've got it set on, on a couple of calculus books that's elevated. But most people don't have their computers elevated. So it's more at a ground level, right? So I need to be able to. You need to be able to move your computer so that you've got that view of your teacher seeing you right. So I need to see that you can't just have your face right in the recording. You've got to have your face, both your hands, when you type into the calculating to be able to see that. Okay. And so I'm just using this as an example. So you just to remind you because that's very important. It's called the acceptable sitting position. So I'm just going to remind you of that. Okay, class. Um, okay, so we're talking about the handouts. Um, what I'm also going to have handy, and you can have this out when you take your quiz too, is because we're going to do a few rounding problems. So you want to have this sheet here. This is X, Roman numeral X. Uh, so that would be Roman numeral X, which is like 10. And um, you want to have your place values because we're going to do some rounding here. So here's your decimal point, the N decimal point. These are small decimal values. See how they all have THS at the end. We never write commas on this side of, of our decimal place values. Okay. And then we've got our counting numbers on this side. So on this side, we put one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma. So we've got our periods, ones, thousands, millions, billions, and trillions. Whereas over here, these have THS at the end. You know, so they start off with tens, or right? this slide starts off with ones, tens, hundreds, thousands with the THS. So you can have this sheet out when you're rounding. Um, there is, you can also have this sheet out 
uh, this is page one of your co rec workbook from 1.5. You see, it's got the steps here. See these steps here about how to round? So you always want to identify the digit, uh, the location of the place value that you're rounding to, and, and make it a habit to like box it. I always box it. And then you want to study its neighbor. So you want to study the box digit number to its right. So you want to study its neighbor. Okay. And I always draw like a little line looking at the neighbor. And it's a comparison if then, if then, like an if then flow chart. So if the neighbor is, is at least five, five or more, then you're going to have to increase this box digit. So you increase that box digit. Don't increase the neighbor, you increase the box digit by one. Okay. However, if the neighbor is not at least five, then there's no need to increase the box digit. So the box digit just remains the same. Okay. So very important with rounding. Um, if you need to take a statistics course, and I also teach statistics, I also do that online as well. Um, you do a lot of rounding in, in the statistics course. So rounding to learn how to round correctly is very important. And if you're if you're going to take other classes too, you will need to round. There are some rounding um, problems in college algebra and also in the liberal arts math class as well. So just not as many as in this course, okay? But we do need to learn how to round correctly. And then uh, what happens is basically the remaining digits after that box digit, they basically become zeros, okay? Um, and um, they become zeros and, you know, uh, if, if they're zeros, and they're a part of the counting numbers. If there's zeros and there are zeros that are here, part of the counting numbers, then you do need to keep them. But if there are zeros and they're over here on the small decimal side, then you only need to keep those zeros if you happen to be stopping the rounding at that particular place value. So like if it says round to the nearest hundreds, and, and these all end up being zeros, and it says round to nearest hundreds, then you do need to include you know, that in zero there um, because it said round to the hundreds. Um, but but you, know, you don't have to record all these zeros. So there's zeros back here that need to get replaced. These digits become zeros. You, don't, you wouldn't need to write them unless, unless you're, you wanna stop, you wanna stop the rounding at that particular place value, okay? And now here, if you've got zeros here in your counting numbers, yes, you do need to put those numbers, those zeros uh, recorded there. So I hope that makes sense. And we'll do some problems as an example for that. Um, and then let's see. And then sometimes there's some carrying involved. So sometimes you'll have some nines. And you know, when you add one, nine plus one is 10. So you would write down the zero and then you would carry the one. So sometimes there's some carrying that's needed, okay? Um, and then we have a habit of on our paper putting the approximately equal to symbol, which, uh, which means that the problem isn't exactly that value, it's approximated. So the computer will, will not have those approximately equal to symbols. They'll probably just have the equal sign, but on your paper, you note that, to note that you went, okay? Um, and then there's a comma rule. Comma rules are required for numbers that have at least five digits. Uh, commas are optional for numbers that have four digits. Okay, so that's, that was also on a Jeopardy. If you like Jeopardy, that was one time a question on Jeopardy. Okay, so that you can have that sheet out to help you, these two sheets to help you on your quiz, to help you with rounding, because you'll have, you'll have several problems. Uh, it looks like it looks like on your quiz, you'll have four problems. See this here, number three, four, five, and six. It looks like you'll have four problems and see their values are 11. So that's almost 11 times four is 44. It's almost, you know, 50, right? Almost 50, almost half your quiz is gonna be based on rounding. So you can have a good opportunity to score well on the quiz if you know how to round because you've already got about 44 points for rounding correctly. So just remember little things like, you know, your teacher wants you to put the approximately equal to symbol on your paper because that'll be like a point. And remember to show some work, remember to box the digit, box the digit, draw the arrow to your neighbor. 
And then if you're adding a one, show the caring. So that's all part of showing your work um, so that you have uh, showing your work and not just putting your answer into the computer. I want to sh show your work. That's what the theme has been all semester is showing your work. And, and it doesn't take, you know, it doesn't take five grueling hours is it does it take you five hours to show your work no so it's teaching you you know patience patience is a virtue um and it's just teaching you to be mindful and considerate right and you're showing your work you're being mindful so please um, um hope you've learned that during the semester and just be patient with yourself okay and it, it doesn't last very long when you show your work for that it, it, you'll be surprised it, it, it takes less than five minutes and and we give you plenty of time on the quizzes right i think on the quizzes we give you 60 minutes i think on quizzes and usually about 100 minutes on tests right the other thing you might want to have out um, in case like for reducing is you you want to have your like rules for disability excuse me rules of divisibility so when you're reducing fractions you always want to reveal what's the greatest common divisor that you're reducing the fraction by. So uh, this is good to have because if you have even numbers, even numbers are easily divisible by two. Um, and then sometimes you can reduce a number by three and by four. So it's good to have these rules out. If, if a number ends in a zero or five, you know it, it can be divisible by five. And if a number ends in zero, it can also be divisible by 10. So it's, it's good to, um, you know, have the sheet out in case you need to reduce fractions from time to time. And then also, if you have a list of prime numbers, this is also helpful. Uh, and when we take our final, you can have these sheets out as well. Um, and so when you're trying to reduce, usually we try to exhaust the first two um, rows. These are rows, these are columns. Right, columns go up and down, columns, and then these are rows. So usually we try to exhaust the first two rows. So if a number is not divisible by the first two rows, then you kind of feel confident that it can't be reduced by you know two or by three or by five or by seven. Okay. And then also these numbers are prime. So like uh, uh, prime means only one and, and the number itself will go into that. So sometimes if a number is prime, the only way a number a fraction can be reduced, um, sometimes you know you got a prime number would be that prime number goes into the top, the numerator and the bottom, the denominator, right? So it's good to have your prime list out. Okay. All right. So we're going to get started. Oh, the other thing, um, the other thing is um, okay, just a second. I also have this helpful sheet, page 23. I'll make a reference from the lesson because it's got some um, good information here that I'm gonna make use of when we're doing some of these problems. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to convert a decimal to a fraction. And, and so when we start that, like here's, a, here's our decimal, wanna convert that into a fraction. You wanna start off by writing the decimal over one. So your decimal would be this 0 0.5 over one. And then you want to, in a fraction, you can't have decimals um, in a fraction. So then you have to clear the decimal by multiplying by a power of 10. So you either multiply, in this case, you have one uh, tenths place of so one power of 10, you multiply by like 10 over 10, okay? For example, because you've got one decimal place there, all right? So, um, all right, so, We'll show you some of those problems when we get to the quiz on that. But I just wanted to say, have that out, have that handy. And you can also have that out when you take your quiz, okay? And then the last thing is um, the quiz template. Uh, you, you're advised to print the quiz template for showing your work. And I know it says 40 minutes, but you actually have um, 60 minutes if you need the, the 60 to, to show your work. Um, and it's good to have this, if you're not gonna print it, it's good for you to at least open it up and look at it and maybe make notes on your own paper, if you're gonna use your own paper, because it oftentimes will give you hints 
like what type of problems you're going to be doing and what kind of work is needed. So it's often good to have that out um, or to look at it, right, and make notes to yourself if you're not going to print it. You can print for free uh, in Math World or Tutoring Lab. They will let you print for free in Math World. Um, and also, I think on the, the Norse Technical Building, I think on the first floor, they have a lab. They will also, I believe, let you print if you're on campus at the SBC campus, if you're printing your math templates uh, or your reviews, I'll let you do that. It's related to your map. Okay. So yeah, this template has um, three pages and you can see these are all rounding, like we said, or 11 points. It wants you to put the approximately equal to symbol there. Okay. And then um, three pages there. Okay. So if you're not going to print it, please, look at it and read it, open that up and look at that. Um, and then put little notes that you'll need on your paper that, that you're actually gonna use, okay? Or you can put little notes on the side of your um, practice quiz. Cause you, when you do the, either the online review or you do the paper pencil review, that's worth five points bonus added to your quiz score. And um, you can use that as a reference and have that out while you're actually completing the Canvas Respondents Quiz to jog your memory. So, so these kind of little notes, you know, there's any kind of extra notes that are on here in template for first problem that are not on the actual problem, then you can write that down. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna get started then, and I'm going to just go here. Okay. Start. Okay. So the first problem says it's worth seven points. Write the mixed number in decimal notation and the fraction is 17 and six over 100. And then they want you to show some kind of work, okay? And so if you look at the, your, your quiz paper here, it says write the mixed number in decimal notation and show your work, okay? So it's very similar to that. And then if you look at uh, part one, it says that um, part one, you can reduce, reveal the greatest common divisor, GCD, greatest common divisor for the partial fraction. So try to reduce that fraction and then um, go ahead and do some long division because you have to show your work. So you wanna show your long division, uh, show the long division for that, okay? And when you do division, the top number, the numerator goes inside the house, okay? So if we look at this, uh, 17 and six over 100, um, and we wanna write this mixed number as a decimal, we definitely know it's going to be 17 point something, right? So 17 point something, okay? That's your, your whole number. And then the six over 100 can be reduced definitely by two, because they're even numbers. So you can definitely show that you're gonna reduce that. So six divided by two is three, and 100 divided by two is 50, okay? So basically this becomes um, 17 and three over 50, okay? And so we reduced this six over 100 and we reduced it by two, a greatest common divisor of two to 17 and 350, but, but that's still a mixed number. We need a decimal. So it's 17 point something. So this is where we show the work, where we show the long division, okay? So we've, we've done the first part, we reduced, okay? And you can make a note to yourself, you know, like here, we reduce. Okay, and we, this is the greatest common divisor, G, C, D. That's the greatest common divisor. We did that, we built the greatest common divisor. Okay, and now we're gonna do this part, the long division. We're gonna show the long division. And remember that the numerator goes inside the long division house. Okay, so three goes inside 
three goes inside the long division hell. Three divided by 50. Okay, so, so three divided by 50 is the same thing as saying this way, three divided by 50, which is also the same thing as putting the three inside the house, three divided by 50. So you need, we need to learn this before we graduate from this course, that these are three ways of writing that and the, the numerator goes inside the long division house, okay? And so then you add a decimal point down here in the dividend and you pull it up and then you can add a zero right here, okay? So, so this, is, this is called the dividend and this 50 is called the divisor, just so you learn your vocabulary. And then when you get an answer, the answer is called the quotient, right? So the answer is called the quotient, the answer you get after you divide. So a product is the answer you get when you multiply product, but a quotient is the answer you get after you do long division, okay? And, and so when you type this into the calculator, three divided by 50, you see how it does terminate. That's a terminating decimal. And you wanna make sure you type it in correctly. The three gets typed in first, three divided by 50. So you have this three, then divided by 50, okay? But then you need to show your work. You need to also, you can check using the calculator, but then you also need to show me that you know how to do long division. That's one of the purposes for this quiz is to show before we graduate from this course that we do demonstrate that we know how to do long division. That's the, that's the purpose really for this quiz is to have the student demonstrate that. So 50 doesn't go into three, that's too big. How many 50s go into three? None. And 50 doesn't go into 30, okay? So that's, a, that's also uh, too big, it doesn't fit. Like if you, if you, wear a size 50, let's say you wear a size 50, you wouldn't be able to fit into a size 30. So this is like a 30 because this decimal gets pulled up. So this is like a 30, okay? So then, but, so then you add another zero and then you want to find out how many 50s go into 300. So although your multiplication chart is fairly large, it doesn't go, it doesn't go up past uh, 30, it goes as high as 30, so it doesn't have up to 50. Okay, so, but, um, but this is why we can use this as an aid. See, 0 0.06, we can use this as an aid. So it looks like it goes into it six times. So if I have six groups of 50, because 50 and 50 is 100, then another 50 and 50 is 200, and then another 50 and 50 is, is going to be 300, right? So you have, you have, 50 and 50, that's 100. Then you have another 50, and another group of 50, that's another 100. Then you have another group of 50 plus another group of 50, it's another 100. So there's your 300. And that's why you count one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So this is six. And 50 times six, 50 times six is 300. 50 times six is 300 and the remainder is zero. So, so now in your answer, the answer is not just 0 0.06, because remember you have the counting number. So it's, it's the answer is the 17 plus that 0 0.06, okay? So think of it as 17.00 plus 0 0.06. So you add, if you line up your decimal points, it's six, zero, seven, and one. So that's 17.06. And that would be our answer. So when they say show some work, we, we want you to demonstrate the long division. And when you do your long division, it's better to work with smaller numbers. So you, you could have also divided uh, six divided by 100. You could have, you could have done uh, six divided by 100, the top number six goes inside the house. So you could have done six divided by 100. You have decimal zero here. Okay, and 100 doesn't go into 60, doesn't go into six, 
doesn't go into 60. And then you add a decimal, you add another zero, excuse me. And then 100 goes into 600 six times. Six times zero is zero, six times zero is zero, six times one is six. So that's 600 minus 600. So you can also show your work that way if you don't want to reduce first. But we say that if you reduce and you work with smaller numbers, you know, so 50, working with 50 and working with 300 is smaller than working with, you know, 600, right? And working. So that, that's why we suggest that you reduce the fraction if possible and then do your long division because that's what we want you to show your work. And then it's not just 0 0.06 because remember you have the count, the whole number, the whole number 17, it's 17 plus 0 0.06. And then as a, as a check, here's what you can, you can check if you use your, um, your point zeros, if you use your, um, your um, place value chart, 0 0.06, see right here. So let me get a piece of paper. So let's see, let's do this. So decimal point, point zero 0.06, see that? And if I use my rulers, right here. So point zero 0.06, see the six, the six C is in the hundred, see that? Six hundredths, so six over one hundred. Six hundredths, six over one hundred. So that's another way that you can check that afterwards. Okay, you can kind of spot check that afterwards. Okay, but don't rely don't rely on that totally because that's more like a mental a mental check rather than sh than uh, showing your work. We want you to show the long division. That's a mental check there. Okay, all right. And then I was going to check the answer key. So I go to my answer key. I'm looking at number one. See, version B was 317.06. So this is on page 53. Okay. All right. Then on number two, also worth 11 points, they want you to change this decimal to a mixed number fraction form and then reduce um, if possible. And then they want you to show some work, okay? So this, if I were to read this out loud in words, this is 57 and 142, so that's tens, hundreds, thousands. So 57 and 142,000. So we definitely have, you know, the 57, and then we have this fractional part, but, for showing your work, this is how we want you to show your work. Uh, that's based on this lesson here, this part here. Steps to convert a decimal to a fraction. That's what we're doing. We're changing this decimal, the, the 0 0.142 to a fraction. So you wanna write down decimal over one, And then you want to substitute your decimal is um, the decimal 0. 0.142 over one, okay? But we're, we're not allowed decimals in fractions. So in your numerator and your denominator, you cannot have a fraction. And, and we see we have a, I mean, I'm sorry, in the numerator and denominator, we're not allowed decimals and fractions. We're not allowed decimals and fractions. So you see in the numerator, we have a decimal and you're not allowed a decimal in the numerator or denominator. Denominator is fine, you have that as one, but that's why we need to clear, we need to clear the decimal. And then that's where the idea of multiplying comes in. You wanna, this is on page 23 of your workbook from lesson 3.1. And you wanna multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same power of 10, so that you're multiplying by a form of one, either 10 over 10, 100 over 100, or 1,000 over 1,000. And that looks like what we have, the 1,000 over 1,000. 
It depends on the most number of decimal digits present among the numerator. So you see, we've got three, see, tens, hundreds, thousands, three. So, so we wanna go with a thousand over a thousand. So um, we wanna do that. So times a thousand over a thousand, okay? And then what, what will happen when you do that, it says here, the numerator will become a whole number, okay? So yeah, because when you multiply, you know, how we, you know how we multiply fractions? You know we multiply fractions, right? Straight across, right? So I'm gonna put a note here. I'm gonna say clear the decimal, clear the decimal by multiplying by a power of 10, express as one. So, so our power of 10 was a, oh, it should be a thousand over a thousand. So I need another zero there. So it's a thousand over a thousand multiplied by a power of 10 expressed as one. So a thousand over a thousand is one. And then we used a thousand because we had three decimals, see, one, two, three. So we had three, decimal places. So that's why we went with a thousand. And then you just multiply straight across. So multiply straight across. Multiply straight across. So when we do that, um, 0. 0.142 times 1,000 is 142. And then one times a thousand is just a thousand. Okay, but you see now, now you have see no more, no more, fra uh, no more decimals. Remember, you're not allowed decimals in fractions. So here we couldn't stop here because we had a decimal. Now we have no more decimals. So it's 142 over a thousand, and now we just need to reduce that. So this now is equal to 57 and 142 over 1,000. And now we're gonna just reduce. And um, we might be able to reduce by, we definitely can reduce by two, but we might be able to reduce by four. So let me, let me see, um, let me just try, let me try four to see. 142 divided by four, Nope. When I do 142 divided by four, I get 35.5. So no. So we're we know we're safe with two. Okay. So don't forget it's the 57, and now I'm going to reduce by two. Remember that's called the greatest common divisor. Remember GCD. GCD is what does that stand for? Greatest common divisor. So 142 divided by two is 71. And 1,000 divided by two is 500. Okay. And then I don't, I don't, I think that's lowest terms. I don't think that can be reduced again. If I look at 71, I, that might be a prime number. Look over here, my table. This is Roman numeral. This is five, six, seven, eight. Roman numeral five, six, seven, eight, page eight. But you see, prime numbers less than a thousand. See, seventy one's on there. So that means that 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 could not be reduced. The only way that could be reduced is if if seventy one goes into seventy one, which it does one time. But does seventy one go into five hundred? So no. When you do five hundred divided by seventy one, you're going to get a decimal. So yeah, so that can't be reduced. So this, this would be the lowest terms. So we made this decimal into a, a fraction. So, so first it became uh, 142 over 1,000. And then we reduced that by two to give us 57 and 71 over 500, okay? So again, what we did was we took the, the decimal part 
0.142, we put it over one, decimal over one, decimal over one. So we put 0.142 over one, decimal over one. And then we cleared the decimal by multiplying by a power of 10. So we went with a thousand over a thousand because this had three decimal places. If it had two decimal places, then we would have gone with 100 over 100. And if it had one decimal place, we would have gone with 10 over 10. So I just got that knowledge from here. Okay. And um, the other thing is, again, if you want to do like a spot check, a mental spot check, if I look at 0.142, the other thing I can think of here, um, turn this over, go to the decimal point, 0.142. So one, four, Two, I'm going to use my ruler. So you can see here that this two is in the thousands place. That two is in the thousands place. So that kind of lets you check that kind of spot check, right? 142 over a thousand. Kind of lets you spot check that. It's just, it's just that's a way to like double check. I would double check your work that way. That's not a way for you to show your work, really, that, but you can double check your work that way because we got that. And then we still have to reduce it to get this. It's just the in answer. If I check that on my answer key, see that right there? 57, 71 over 500, okay? So they didn't leave, they didn't leave it like this. They didn't leave it like that. They had to reduce it says reduce and you want to re show your teacher what the common divisor is okay okay then the next word problems are rounding okay and you want to make sure that you you know you might want to just do this right away you want to make sure you put your approximately equal to symbol in there okay approximately equal to symbol in there and uh you want to round to nearest tens place tens place so if I, if I go back and look at this, let's read this here, tense place. So we have 15 and then we have three, six, four, seven, and two, see that? So three, six, four, seven, and two. So that looks like that's in the hundreds, hundred thousands place. So if I read this out loud, this is tens, right? So this is tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Okay. Now what are we rounding it to? They want us to round to the nearest tenths, the nearest tenths. Okay, so the nearest tenths would be this, this three right here. That's, that three is in the tenths place. So, so you wanna you know, take your time and box the correct number. You wanna box that. That is, you know, that is in the tenths place. So that's part of showing your work is tell your, teacher that you know your place values, that's the tenth place. Then you look at the neighbor, right? And you're like, is it, you're comparing it to five. Is it at least five? Yep, it's a six. So, so um, it's, look at your neighbor. It's at least five, which means five or more. So you wanna add, a one. So you want to show on the box digit, on the box digit, you add a one, but not to the neighbor. You want to add a one to the three. So you add a one to the three. Three plus one, three plus one is four. So three plus one gives you four. And then you have decimal and then the five and the one. So 15.4. And these become zeros. These become, that becomes a zero, that becomes a zero, that becomes a zero, that becomes a zero, but, but you won't need them. 
So this becomes a zero for the six, a zero for the four, a zero for the seven, zero for the two, but you don't, you don't need them because they want you to stop at the tens. This is the tens place. They want you to stop at the tens. So don't, don't put this into the computer because the computer will mark that wrong. So this is approximately 15.4. So that's what the computer does. And if I check my answer here, see, approximately 15.4, okay? Okay, now we're gonna round the next problem. Um, oh, and I guess I should, okay, I guess I should practice reading this. If you had to read this out loud in words, how would that be done? Let's see. So we said that the two, what place value was that two in? That two was, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So that two was in the hundreds, thousands, hundreds, thousands. So the very last thing you would say is hundreds, thousands, but then it's like one, two, three, um, and we don't, we don't usually, we don't usually put commas on decimal sides except to read it out loud. So if I do one, two, three, comma, to read out loud, this would be 15 and, the decimal point is the and, 15 and, then we would say 36,472, but then we would add in that place value, 10 thousands, 10 thousands. So that would be 15 and 36,472, but then it would be 10 thousands. And that's where the THS comes in, okay? So, so that little, you know, one, two, three comma is only temporarily, it's only temporarily just to kind of gauge that you're gonna say 36,472, but then you're gonna say 10 thousands, okay? That's if you had to read that out loud. And this one, if you have to read this long one out loud, this is long too. So I do one, two, three, comma. That's also 68,000. So just like that, 68,000. So it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So again, it's 100,000. So this is 19 and 68,497 10,000s with the THS at the end. That's if you have to read that out loud. And we're rounding this to nearest hundreds. So the hundreds, this is, you know, after the decimal point, it's tens, hundreds. After the decimal point, it's tens, hundreds. So it's this right here, tens, hundreds, right here. That's six, that eight. It's that eight, tens, hundreds, hundreds. That's the eight. Then you look at the neighbor. Is that neighbor at least five? Nope. The neighbor is not at least five. So the neighbor, which is four, is not at least five. So the neighbor four is not at least five. So do not add one to the box digit. Was the box digit was eight, so do not add one. So the eight will just remain the same. So this is approximately, so the eight remains the same and there's no carrying because we're not adding anything or anything like that. There's no nine involved there. So that's just, it's 19.68. So that's the hundreds place, tens, hundreds, and it does not get increased by one because the four, the neighbor is not at least five. So you don't add one to the A, it remains the same. That's 19.68. And then put on your paper, put the approximately equal to symbol there. Okay, and if I look at that, see? 19.68, 19 and 68 hundreds, okay? So if I go back to this one, if I say look at the neighbor here, if I go back and put the neighbor here, the neighbor was um, four. So you look at, no, here, let's see, we're rounding to nearest tens, so that's three. So the neighbor was six. So if you look at the neighbor here, the neighbor was six. Let's 
it's at least five. So you add one to what? You add one to three. So I'm gonna just put that in there when I make my, uh, I usually make a PDF of my work. So I'm gonna put those notes in there so you'll have them. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, if it if it doesn't make sense, you don't forget you have uh, our math row tutors. Or we have probably at least 28 tutors that uh, are available for tutoring. So find your favorite tutor, and you if you can go virtually or face to face. And the link is the link the Zoom link is both in both Canvas courses, your Math 410 Canvas course, and one of those modules. I think it's module three offhand. And then in your Math 105 Canvas course, I also put the Zoom link there as well. And um, I don't remember the letter of that module, but it's you know somewhere towards the beginning. But it's a it'll, it's the module title, you know, is Math World. But the Zoom link is there. So when you press on that Zoom link, you'll be taken um, into your um, your math role, you'll be taking the operator will come on board and will ask you what do you need tutoring for. You just tell them you're interested in elementary algebra tutoring or math 410 tutoring. And then they will put you in a break room with somebody. And they should have a document camera. Like this is called a document camera that I've got. And I, I peel this right here in a document camera that I'm using. They should have something like that too. And if not, you can always, you, know, you can always say, oh, I, I know my teacher, when she does her recording, she uses a document camera. Can you go ahead and use yours while you're tutoring me? Cause that's really helpful. And then, they have, every tutor, I'm pretty sure, got uh, an upheaval for that, okay? Um, so we've got, like I said, about 28 tutors available to help you, and their only duty is to tutor you, just um, tutor all day. They just tutor uh, and answer your math question. That's their only duty, and when they're done for the day, they're done. They check out, and they're done. They don't have to grade papers. They don't have to make videos. They, um, they don't have to, you know, do averaging grades or make tests or grade tests or anything like that, spot check feedback, they just, they're done. So their only duty is to tutor you, but um, but they need students to go in and see them. So if you need help, uh, feel comfortable because your, you know, your, your tuition and whatnot includes those tutors. That's why you have your math support course. That math, I think it's 0004, that math support course, that gives you unlimited access to math well, okay? All right, so now here, uh, this is also a very long decimal. So four and like 29,982, and that would be tens, hundreds, thousands, ten hundred thousands, again, hundred thousands, okay? We're rounding to the nearest thousands. So the nearest thousands, I think, is the third place value. You look at this decimal point, so you see, Tens, hundreds, thousands. You want to count three. After the decimal point, you want to count one, two, three, because that's where the thousands is at. This is tens, hundreds, thousands. This is ten thousands, hundred thousands. Okay. So tens, hundreds, thousands. You want to count three after the decimal point. So round to your thousands. So one, two, three. So you want to box this number right there. You want to box your nine. And then you want to look at the neighbor. To the right, is it at least five? So is the neighbor and the neighbor is eight at least five? And you would say yes. So that means you're gonna add one to the box digit. And that box digit is that that nine, right? So it's tens, hundreds, thousands. And then and then this one's going to involve some carrying because nine plus one is is ten. So nine and oh, and remember, show your one. Remember, show your show your plus one in there. So let me let me do this. Let me wipe this out. To show that you're adding plus one there, and nine plus one is 10. Then you have to carry another one. Nine plus one is 10. Then you have to carry another one, next number. Two plus one is three. And then 
Now no more caring because you didn't have any more nines. That was a two. If you had another nine, then you'd be doing another caring, but but it's a two. Two plus one is three, and then there's a decimal four. Okay. And then these digits, these digits thereafter become zeros, but but you don't need them. Uh, this eight and this two, this eight becomes a zero and the two becomes a zero, but you don't need them because you only want to record um, up to the, we put the approximately equal to, we want to uh, record up to the thousands, which remember we said was like three digits, one, two, three. So, so you want to put in the computer approximately 4.300 zero, zero, because that's tens, hundreds, thousands tens, hundreds, thousands. So sometimes if the value is zero, sometimes you do need to put that zero there if, if they want you to record, they want you to stop recording up to the three decimal places, the thousands, okay? But you don't need these extras because these go beyond tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, but you don't need those because they didn't say round to the hundred thousand. They just said thousands. You want to stop, you want to, um, Stop. I guess what recording at the thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands. Okay. All right. And if I check that on my answer key, this is number five. They're approximately C four point three zero zero zero. Okay. So it matches. Okay. So again, if I want to stress what I box, let me go back and write this these down here. So here was the tens. So I'm boxing the tens, right? Look at the neighbor, and I'm adding one to that, right? And then here I had nineteen point six eight nine four nine seven. So hundreds is just the hundreds right here. And look at the neighbor. It was at least five, so I added one, so emphasizing the eight. Okay, and I guess I could also highlight that, right? I guess I could highlight the numbers that I'm because um, here it was kind of tight. Here. So here we had four point two nine nine eight two and we went around to there's thousands so tens hundreds thousands so we're boxing that nine looking at the neighbor eight we're adding a lot of adding one but I'm just trying to emphasize the box digit it was kind of tight for you to see that okay. and then now we went around to the hundred thousands hundred thousand um now you want to this is interesting. You want to pay attention to this because these have THS, see? THS, 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 but this one doesn't. This one only has an S. So you want to be careful because the THSs are on the small side. See all these over here on the small side? These are all THSs, but this is not. This is on the counting number side. This is hundred thousands. So we're looking over here on this side, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. See, no THS, hundred thousands. So, so now, um, and if you think about it, there's, there are no decimals. So that's nice because it could have been, they could have added a whole bunch of decimals and maybe to throw us off, but that's not because it's, the, you don't see a decimal, so it's understood to be right there in the back. That's a, that's a comma. But it's ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Okay. So remember, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Hundred thousand. So you want to box that four, and then you want to look at the neighbor to the right. Look at its neighbor, and it's a two. So the neighbor, which is two, is not 
at least five. So what does that mean? Don't add one to the box digit. So you're not going to add one to the four. It's going to remain the same. So you have approximately you know, four. And then these all become zeros. So now you do need you do need these zeros. The two and the eight become a zero, comma. The three becomes a zero. The eight becomes a zero. The nine becomes a zero. And then, like I said, it, it terminates or stops there. But you do need these zeros because we're on the counting side. And you and otherwise, if you didn't put the zeros, it would look like the answer is only four. And 428,389. You want to say it rounds to about four hundred thousand. Not you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to say it rounds to four, right? You would leave those off. You don't want to leave those decimals off. Okay. And uh, if I look at my answer key number six, there's four hundred thousand, approximately approximately equal to four hundred thousand. Okay. So just be careful with that. Uh, if they have T, you can see they have T H S C. These have THS, 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 but this does not have THS. This just has basically an S. See on the tiny number side. Okay, now for the next page, the last three problems here. Um, let's see, let me also look at my template. Let me see. So we were we lose the template for the first problem, but then I kind of forgot about the template. So this one, okay, good. The good thing about the template is it jogs your memory. See, it has decimal over one. See that on number two? So that will jog your memory for this. Decimal over one. So this decimal 0.142 over one, and then we had to clear it. So that's a nice thing is that on the template, if you print it, that will, that will give you a hint. Okay, it tells you that you're not allowed decimals and fractions. So you have to so you have to clear them. See, clear them. So that gives you a hint, and you multiply, you know, by ten over ten, and you can put that extra note here: multiply by ten over ten, or hundred hundred, or thousand over thousand. You can write that in here. I didn't put that there, but you could do that. And then you can have these rounding problems, and it reminds you to put the approximately equal to because that will kind of point on there, and then and then show some kind of work, you know, so show the boxing, show the arrow to the neighbor. If you're carrying, show the carrying, okay? So um, I can write that down here, let me see. So um, I guess here, um, I guess I can put that here. So um, show the boxing, the arrow, to the neighbor any caring and then um, so that's just a little bit of memory there to jog your memory show the boxing show the arrow to the neighbor Any caring, okay? All right. Okay, then let's see the last three problems. Change the fraction to a decimal form, round it to the nearest thousands if necessary. So if it's a, if if your um, if it's a decimal is very very long, then you want to you want to stop it at the thousands and turn it at the thousands if necessary. Show your work. So you have to show your long division. So you can use your calculator as an aid to guide you. So, you know, 27 divided by 32 is this, but you have to show me that you know how to do long division and I'm gonna be checking for that process. Okay, so remember, um, you wanna do, Long division, the number 27 goes inside the house and dividing that by 32, okay? And then you're gonna add a decimal here and 
pull it up and add a zero. So if you're a size 32, you cannot fit into a size 27. So these are zeros. How many times will 32 go into 27? None. And then how many times will 32 go into 270? So it, it does go off your chart because your, your, your multiplication chart remember, only goes up to, I think it was, uh, was it? 30, 30 by 30, and that goes over 32, but you can use this as an eight. See how that says it's an eight? So you know that, okay, 32 goes into 270 about eight times. And then when you multiply 32 times eight, do that here, 32 times eight, eight times two is 16, carry one, eight times three is 24 plus one, is 256. And that goes underneath here. Then you can subtract 270, take away 256 should give you 14, because this becomes a 10 and the seven decreases to a six. 10 minus six is four, six minus five, right? So there's your 14 left over. And then you go back to 27 divided by 32, got to keep going. Um, and, it, and it says uh, round to your thousands. So tens, hundreds, thousands, but then you need to look at the neighbor. So you need to, you need to continue this uh, up until you get to the seven. You don't have to do it for the five. You don't need it for the five, but you do have to do it up to the seven because they want you to round to the thousands, which is three decimal places, tens, hundreds, thousands. But then you need to box that and look at the neighbor. If it's five or more, you add one to the box digit. So you don't you don't need to do the recording all the way, the, the long division recording work all the way to five. You need to do it up to the seven though. So you're gonna, you, you still have some work to do. You're gonna add a zero in the dividend and pull it down. And then how many 32s go into 140? So then you look at this and that will tell you about four times without going over. And then you're gonna figure, okay, what's 32 times four? So four times two is eight, three times four is 12. And you can also do this, 32 times four to make sure, 128. And then you're gonna subtract 140, take away 128. So this is a 10, decreases to three, 10 minus eight is two, three minus two is one. So you have 12 left over, see, 12 left over. But then you gotta keep going because that's only, that's only two decimal places, tens, hundreds. We want you to go to the thousands. So we gotta keep going. So you're gonna add another zero in the dividend. You're gonna pull it down. And you're gonna go back to um, 32 divided by, excuse me, go back to uh, 27 divided by 32. Make sure you type it in right. Is it numerator divided by bottom number, top divided by bottom is 0.84375. So we got the eight, we got the four. Now we need the three. So now we're doing 32 times three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. So that's that's 96. You can double check. 32 times three is 96. And you want to subtract 120, take away 96. It's 24. This becomes a 10 and this decreases by one. 10 take away six is four. 11 take away nine is two. And then you're going to add, they have to go one more time because they want you to round to nearest thousand. So it's tens, hundreds, thousands. But now you need to look at the neighbor. So you need to see what the neighbor is. So you do need one more zero, pull it down, look at 240, and go back to 27 divided by 32. So you got the 0 0.8, you got the 0 0.4, I mean 0 0.843. And now the last one you need is a seven. So you're looking at 32 times seven, 32 times seven. So seven times two is 14, carry your one. Seven times three is 21, plus one is 22. So that's like 224, it's 224. So this gives you 240 minus 224. So then this 240 take away 224. 
So that's 10 or decrease that three. 10 minus four is six, three minus two is one. So 240 minus 24 is 16 left over, okay? But that's okay, you can stop there. You don't have to keep going. We, we have enough here. Tens, hundreds, thousands, and you look at the neighbor, which is seven. So is the neighbor, which is seven, at least five, five or more? Yep, yes. So then what does that mean? That means you're gonna add one, to the box digit of three. Now yeah, one to that and show that. Okay. So then this becomes approximately. So you have basically zero point. And uh, what happens here is this three becomes a one. And then the, you have four here and then eight. So you have point eight four and then this three plus one is four and then this seven becomes a zero but you don't you don't need it this seven becomes a zero the digits thereafter become zero but you only want to record it up to the thousands tens hundreds thousands tens hundreds thousands. so you don't you actually don't if you type this into the computer it will mark it wrong or complain because it doesn't want this this would be tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, that'd be ten thousands. And it wants you to stop at the thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands. I want you to stop at the thousands, okay? Tens, hundreds, thousands. Okay, and then if I check that on my paper here, number seven, see, approximately 0.844. All right. Okay, then number eight, um, write the decimals, write the indicated sum in decimal form, round it to the nearest thousands if necessary. So again, you know, like, like some of these, you'll have to do long division on these fractions. You'll have to do long division on these fractions. But if, the, if it's really, really long, like these decimals, then they want you to chop it off at the thousands. But I think these are gonna terminate. I don't think you'll have to round it to the thousands. I think they're gonna terminate but you still have to show the long division. So you can use your calculator to check it, but, but for full credit, you, you want, remember this quiz, the purpose is to show your work, that show your, you know how to do long division. So when they say show your work, it means you wanna do long division on the fractions. And then, and then you're gonna add them all up. So you have the, 57.8, okay? But you need to find the decimal equivalency for this fraction, 2300, and you need to find the decimal equivalency for this fraction, two fifths, okay? And so basically, you know, 23, there it is, 23 divided by 100 is uh, 0 0.23. Okay. And two divided by five is 0 0.4. Okay. So let's, let me just line this up. Okay. So that's that's basically what we're going to do. We're, we're changing these fractions into decimals. So we're changing the fractions into decimals. Okay, but we need to show our work. So we need you to show the long division, go back and show the long division, demonstrate that you do know how to do long division. Okay, so if I come back over here and I do um, the 23 goes inside the house, 23 goes inside the house divided by 100. Okay, so the numerator which is the top number goes inside the house. OK, 
Okay. So a hundred, a hundred doesn't go into 23. 100 doesn't go into 23. If you were a size 100, you can't go into 23, but you can add a decimal and pull it up. And you can add a zero here. And then 100 will go into to 230 about twice because 100 times 2 is 200. And then 0 take away 0 is 0, and 3 take away 0 is 30. So 230 take away 200 is 30. And then, then you're going to put another zero down here in the, in the dividend and pull it down. And 100 will go into 300 three times. So 100 times three is 300. Okay. So, so 23 divided by 100 is 0.23. Okay? And, and you know these are zeros here, right? Because 100 didn't go into two nor into 23. So I, that's where this came from, right? That came from. 23 divided by 100 gave us 0.23, right? And that's 23 hundredths, right? 23 hundredths. But you want you want to show that you know how to do long division. And you can use your calculator to check your work. And then the other thing is to show two fifths. So remember the top number goes inside the house. The two goes inside the house. 2 divided by 5, add a decimal, a 0, add a, a decimal and a 0 here. And how many 5s go into 2? None. If you're a size 5, you can't squeeze into a size 2. But how many 5s go into 20? About 4, because 5 times 4 is 20. So that gives you 0.4. And that's what we had here. See, remember, that was 2 divided by 5. OK? So you can. You can quickly use your calculator and change it on paper like your teacher did, but then just go back, you know, so you're not losing points because you have to demonstrate that you do know how to do long division. You have to finish it. You have to finish it. You can't just, you know, put that and not this. You've got to finish it through. So if you don't know how to do long division, you know, please go to make a pop-up visit to Math World, either in person or virtually, if you need to brush up on long division or see your instructor, right? You can see me, your instructor during her office hours, see your instructor. And that takes me about 30 minutes or so to go over long division. Okay, but now we're gonna add these. So if I add these, cause see we're adding them, three and zeros is three. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You carry one. And you can also use two plus eight plus four, 14 carry one, and then one plus seven is eight, and then that's five, yeah. And then if you wanna double check this way too, you can do um, 0.23 plus 57 and 80 hundreds plus, you can say four tens or, or 40 hundredths, but that's 58. 0.43, so it checks out, okay, it checks out. So if I double check that on, on the paper here, see, okay. Okay, and then the last problem, uh, this is important. Uh, again, write the indicated quotient. Quotient is, quotient means that you're dividing the answer you get after you divide, and we're dividing here uh, in decimal form, okay. so. Uh, and well, let me let me not put let me not put let me not write divide because because I want to say how I want to ask how do we multiply fractions because see it's five and eight tenths divided by five nines so I want to ask this question because it wants you to show you some work I want you to answer um, how do we divide fractions. To see you're dividing fractions, right? How do we divide fractions? And you see right here, we're dividing by five nine. So what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. Of the uh, second fraction. Well, of, of this, we multiply by the reciprocal of the um, 
well, of, the, of this, we multiply by the reciprocal of, the, of that fraction. I was going to say the second fraction, but this doesn't have a fraction here. But it's this. You multiply by the reciprocal of that. I'm going to say of that fraction. Multiply by the reciprocal of, let's say, that fraction. So I'm talking about, you know, five, nine. So, so we basically, you basically keep, change this division into a times, right? Multiply, and then you basically flip, right? Flip, or you say, take, take reciprocal. Right. So, so we keep the 5.8, change the division to times, and then you flip five nines, which becomes nine over five. Okay. So that's the first part of setting it up. But then now you're going to show 5.8 times, and now you need to change this to a decimal. So remember, like you change these to decimals. So you can quickly use your calculator, nine divided by five is 1.8. Okay, but remember you have to, for the full credit, you have to show me that you know how to do long division. So you're gonna do the top number goes inside the house, nine divided by five, right? So the numerator, goes inside the long division. So, so for nine fifths, the nine goes inside out. So five goes into nine one time, five times one is five, nine minus five is four, so see? Then you add a decimal, pull it up and a zero and nine and then oh and pull it down and five goes into 48 times see and eight times five is 40 and that's how we're getting the 1.8 so you you want to show that and then now you have to show me you know how to multiply uh you know how to multiply 5.8 times 1.8 okay so so yes yes 5.8 times 1.8 is um, 10.44. But you, you have to show me that you know how to do the long multiplication. So you're going to do 8 times 8, which is 64, carry your 6. 8 times 5 is a 40. So eight times eight is 64. Eight times five is 40. Plus that six is now 46. Okay, so eight times eight is 64. Write down the four, carry the six. Eight times five, so I did eight times eight and I did eight times five, which is 40. Then I add the six, which is 46. Okay, now I'm going to start the second round. This you leave vacant or you exit out or you put a zero. So you either exit out or you put a zero here. Okay, so you have a couple of choices. So you can either do four, six, four, and you can put a zero there if you want. Or you can leave it vacant, leave it vacant if you want. Um, but um, maybe do vacant. But then now you're gonna do one times eight, one times eight. So one times eight is eight, and one times five is five. Okay, so now you add eight, what's eight and six? Eight plus six, 14. Yeah, because we're going to add these up. So four and nothing is four. Eight and six is 14. Carry the one. Five, six, eight, nine, 10. 
Okay, so that's taking shape, see? That's taking shape, see, 10, 44, okay? So what I was gonna show you is you either put an X on the second, we do your second round of multiplication. Your second round, you either put an X on that, on that first place value, and then you start one times eight, five times one, but you have to leave this vacant. So you either put an X here, or you, or you put a zero, and so then, one times eight was eight, five times one is five. And, and then I was adding those up. So adding those up. Or, or you leave it vacant, you leave it vacant, and then you have the eight and the five. So then when you add everything up, Uh, okay. All right. So then now the decimal moves. If you look at your decimal moves, you have, it looks like you have two decimal moves here. So you have this decimal move and this decimal move. So there's two decimal moves. You see these little decimals right here? It's two of them. So one, two. Okay. One, two, okay, one, two. And that's how we end up with this. That's how we end up with 10.44, okay? And that's, that's, your, that's your final answer. And if I, if I check that on here, see, 10.44. Okay, class, all right. So. I hope I hope that's helpful for you. I hope you you're able to um, study this and do well. And uh, there's like I said, there's an online Hawks review, and then there's the also like kind of like a version A that's right before this version of your practice quiz in your workbook. And then of course there's there's this one. Then so you've got two other practice aids, but you can use one of them to um, jog your memory to help you with that. Okay, so good luck with your studying. Okay. Wish you well with your quiz. Thank you. Take care.